All right, here we got a guy from the left coast, California way. Yes. And, and here's a guy who, uh, back in the 1960s, started out with a group called 13th Floor. Yeah. And you met a couple of interesting guys uh, that work with you, Lou Adler and uh, Steve Berry. Right. And also P.F. Sloan. And for the, by the way, P.F. Sloan is a guy. Did you ever remember that song, Eva Destruction, Barry McGuire? Yeah. He wrote that and many, many others. Talk about how the name change came about from 13th Floor and also what it was like working with those guys. Well, for one, the Beatles was already gone, so we, could, we had to change our name. And uh, there was a 13th Floor elevator, so we had to, we had to change our name again. So... Uh, um, the grassroots was just like a, well, you know, it was the 60s, so you can run with that one for a while. It's an old political expression. <laughs> you guys have been around the grassroots long enough to know we're going to go all over with that kind but, of thing. But why like grassroots? Like instead, of, usually it's one word, grassroots. How, how, why did you break it up to grassroots, two words? Well, the grassroots is a, when you say use yeah. it as a political expression, yeah. it's more of a grassroots okay. movement, you know, so. <laughs> ah. Ah. No, but getting back to working with P.F. Sloan and those guys. <laughs> now, P.F. Sloan was like, uh, was like a Bob Dylan kind of a guy, he wrote a lot of great songs, and, uh, and unfortunately for P.F. Sloan, he never got a hit record, but we were an outlet for all of his, all of his great talents and a lot of other great songwriters, and uh, we were fortunate to have 29 charted records on Billboard's Hot 100, and thanks to all these guys here in Cleveland. We've been, we've been doing it for 38 years now. You know, it's amazing. Nowadays, you see performers, they come up with a couple of hit records, and they call them major superstars. I hate when they toss that around, but yet guys like the Grassroots and Rob and his band and so many of the others here tonight had long, if you ever look up the long record list of songs, their discography, you wouldn't believe all the songs that these guys have recorded. And, and, and you know, like, uh, like it's the genesis of some of these songs, like Midnight Confessions, you know. Uh, share with our audience, if you will, You've probably been through these things a thousand times, but people are interested in knowing sometimes the idea, how that came about, why you chose to record a song like that. Well, Midnight Confessions was, uh, was written by a guy, named, a guy named Lou Josie, and if you, if you listen to the words to the song, you'll know what this is about, guys. But uh, this is somebody else's girlfriend or somebody else's wife, actually. She's got a ring on her finger. But uh, these are songs that you know, were sent to us. We either wrote them ourselves or, or we had some meetings on Monday mornings and listened to these great songs written by some really fabulous songwriters, and we would, we would pick them out. And this was just one that just, just stood out uh, amongst... Uh, uh, you know, a lot of songs that came to us. Of course, you know, we were we were a little bit hazy on some mornings, you know, and we listened to, we you know, it was the '60s, folks, and we did we did turn down a couple of really big songs. There was a song written for us called "Don't Pull Your Love Out on Me, Baby," and we went, Nah, we ain't gonna do that one. And we turned that one down. It turned out to be a number one record for Hamlin, Joe Frank, and Reynolds. Same guys that wrote that says, "Don't worry, we'll write you another one." They wrote one called Two Divided by Love" for us. We turned out another one called uh, uh, Love Grows Where My Rosemary Goes. Whoops. But we did take Sooner or Later. We did take Let's Live for Today. We were, where were you when I needed you? We went, so you win some, you lose some. So we're just very fortunate. We're happy to be here. We've had a wonderful 38 years. I figure I got about 26 more in me. So we're. Uh, well, that's, that's, I guess, again, the people see you now. You look terrific. And so what, what is Rob Grill in the grass? What are you up to now in, in the year you know 2000? We're, doing? we're touring with all the bands like these great guys you've already seen tonight, all the ones that are going to come out here. I want everybody to know, and all you guys are fans, you know these guys are just not coming out of the woodwork tonight. These guys have been on the road for all these years, honing their act and their skills and playing these hits every night all over the country, flying back and forth and back and forth. And uh, we're just happy to be here, and uh, we're just going to keep touring. You, you, know, you know what's so great? This is a fantastic concert. However, we're putting this on for posterity on PBS. Yes. Now, PBS, tell me about your feelings about why PBS and why you got involved with a project like this. Well, I mean, I, you know, this is a wonderful thing that, they, you know, the, anything we can do to help public broadcasting, you know, I mean, what they do for, for charity, what they do for children, what they do for the whole, everybody as a whole. Uh, anything we can do to help that out and this is also you know what a great way to get everybody here back together again in one spot 
And uh, our agents are going to love this too. You know, you know that. You know, they're going, oh boy, well the work's going to come down the line. Uh, uh, but you know, just everybody to get back here in one spot and do this in one in one great show, and hopefully this will spawn a bunch of other shows in the future. And you guys just keep those cards and letters and dollars coming in the PBS because of what a great thing it is and what a great organization, huh? Well, you know, here I got some money. <laughs> take up, take up, take up a collection. Take up. You know, the thing is, Rob. The fact that PBS does such a wonderful thing in promoting this music, and, and someone asked me earlier this evening, I was doing an interview. They said. Uh, why is there such an interest, especially now in this music of the 1960s, and what will a show like this do for the music of the 1960s? Well, I think the music of the 1960s is just what it's always been, great songs, and, and that's what it's always been. We were very fortunate to be around then to record all that stuff, and, uh, and uh, that's why I think we still have careers today. Are you still alive? Oh my God! <laughs> These people. Was you looking at? Where did you get that suit? I had it made. Gee, <laughs> look at these. Peter Noon, of course. You know. Yeah, yeah. I, I just came out. To, I wanted to meet this guy from the grassroots. <laughs> you broke the microphone again, Peter. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Off as. I don't know what the, what's going on with the microphone, Let me but. Say, <laughs> You know, Peter, I just wanted to talk like this. Could you just show me how to do it one You know time? what? Can I, I say Peter in English? Can you I do that? I loved you when you did When I'm 64, man. That was great. <laughs> Five more years before oh, I'm 64. Right. Okay. Well, I'll go back and warm up the lads. All righty, all righty, all righty. All right. Peter Noon, how about that? Hey. Jeez. You know, noon in his rubber trousers. You know, you know, the amazing thing is I get a chance to meet some of these guys backstage, but like for guys like Rob, who in the past have probably toured with a lot of these people, meeting them again, in some cases it's been a long period of time, out of the performers on the bill tonight, which, uh, which performers have been the longest time since you've had a chance to see them? Well, this guy here, I see this guy all the time on the road. I, uh, Mark Lindsay, I haven't got to see for a couple of years, but uh, all the rest of them I see uh, almost all the time. Chad and Jeremy, I have never seen, so I'm really <laughs> looking forward to seeing them. So. You know, it's amazing that you guys, your paths cross very so often. But the thing is that when you were doing the shows in the 1960s, there were a lot of these package shows. And when you went on the road for a long period of time, like Dick Clark used to do the Caravan of Stars and everything, and when you did some of these shows, what was it like traveling around the country? You did these one-nighters, and you go from city to city to city, and you got to really get friendly, if you know what I mean, with a lot of these performers and acts. Well, those were some special times, were they not? Oh, they, and they still are. And they still are. And by the way, just to throw this in, 16 times on American Bandstand. The grassroots have the record. Don't want to brag, just want to throw that in. Well, we'll be seeing Rob Grill in the grassroots. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a great big round of applause.